What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Coffee Break. Today we're going to be interviewing Shane from Genuine Love Ministries, also founder of Vega Fit out there in Hawaii. Today they're going to be in the homeland and we're going to be able to chat and chop it up with them, see what they're up to, what they've been doing and how God has been blessing him, the ministry. And he actually has two guests with him that are also partaking in what God is doing in his life. So with that being said, let's get into it. What's up guys? How you been, man? <laughs> Actually, it was nice to meet you, um, you guys here. I forgot your name. Kenzer. Kenzer. And Matthew. And Matthew, I'm Jonathan, and this is Shane. No. Um, no, bro, it's good to see you, man. Welcome to a, a actual formal Coffee Break episode, because I think the last one we did was in um in hawaii yeah but i had wanted to get one like here in the studio which is actually pretty cool but um we had an awesome experience when i was with you in hawaii those who haven't seen the other video um, um go check that one out too but there's been a couple of things that you've been involved now right from vega fit to ministry even though you were always with ministry and and whatnot but i feel like ministry has grown a lot more in your life not only through your, with your children and whatnot but just overall and what god has been doing in your life mm -hmm. and stuff so how's been that transition now that you're i don't know if you're still doing the vega fit um, um therapy like physical therapy stuff no 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 so now you're full-blown ministry yeah so in july of last year yeah i i just remember i was just praying and I just, I needed to know what the Lord wanted me to do in my life. And I came home, I sat on the couch and I heard the Holy Spirit say, you're no longer gonna be doing Vega Fit Recovery. Get ready, you're going to the nation. So this will be your last month of Vega Fit Recovery. Wow. I sat on the couch and I was kind of just like, in this like deep like look and my wife was just in, and a friend of ours, Haley, she was like, are you okay? And I was like, I don't know. I don't think, I don't, I think I just heard the Lord say this is my last month of Vega Fit Recovery. And I got up, started walking around and I was pacing. I was like, this will be my last month of Vega Fit Recovery. This will be my last month of Vega wow. And I kept just like saying it out loud. And then the girls, they turned around, they were like, yeah, I feel the Lord on that. And I was like, you know, there's something really off when your wife is okay with taking a $150,000 pay cut. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, I was like, okay, well, that's gotta be the Lord. Well. Let me let me take the motorcycle. Let me ride to church. You know, just being the guy, I'm just like I need to like make sure I'm hearing right. And then I just got confirmation at church that night, and it was simple. Um, the pastor was he was just talking about you'll never know what's on the other side until you cross the line. Mm -hmm. He was like you you can't figure out if you're just standing on the line or just looking at. You need to cross over to the other side and find out what's on the other side. But then when you go to that side, you can't turn back. Mm. There's no point of looking back. And the Lord just confirmed to me, it's time to step over the line. Wow. And and so that's what I did July of last year. And then um, just really slowed down a lot when it came to business. No longer doing Vega Fit Recovery. But, mm. um, and so started a nonprofit called Genuine Love Ministry. And the whole concept was, the Lord said, I want you to release radical love encounters mm. with people and families in their homes and through these radical love encounters, just being the light of the world and just being genuine, re genuine relationship, the byproduct of that is miracle signs and wonders. Wow. So the focus isn't like, oh, I want to speak at your ministry. Oh, I want the microphone. It's no, I want to be with people mm -hmm. and I want to bring teams through those doors that I have because favor is not just for me, it's for everybody else Amen. as well. So I want to extend that and say, hey, listen, why don't you come with me through these doors and let's release radical love encounters with the one true king and the byproduct of that is miracle signs and wonders which is going to draw them even closer to him so now when when i was with you in hawaii right we had some experiences while you were um you know working yeah. on people you know that were just coming you know asking for for different things right that they needed mm -hmm. your your expertise on and there was moments there where where you always had it in you to just you know there was always a door that would open up for you to impart right the gospel in somebody's life right so you were kind of like technically doing it already mm -hmm. so how has been the transition with leaving something like like that behind you know what i mean yeah. what was it more 
the money wise, you know, that it was what was paying the bills yeah. because you actually had a little bit of that genuine love. It just yeah. flourished out yeah. after you decided to yeah. let it go. So how's been that transition of letting go yeah. something that you were like kind of like doing most of the time? Well, it's really 12 years of knowing and just doing the work of an evangelist already. Obviously it grew and it began to like flourish and people began to see, um, and so it wasn't like, oh, I just all of a sudden just had a love for people. It was 12 years just kind of like from going from glory to glory and faith to faith and the Lord just fine tuning me and working on me. Yeah. Um, but it it was it's still really difficult. It's still really hard. Like I, I, I got to be honest and say I'd much rather probably go back and, mm. and do business because the the comfort you could say of money feels good. Yeah. Right. Um, but if I didn't step out, then it wouldn't be faith, you know? Um, the hardest part is is honestly humbling myself and, and asking people for money, mm. for support, to do the work of the ministry so I can be more focused in that. Um, and, you know, you, you gotta find people who see that value and what it is that you do and yeah. believe in you and your heart and right. trust you. Um, because, you know, let's just be honest, like, people feel like the church has abused like the money so it's mm -hmm. it's not easy just saying hey i want to use your money to mm -hmm. do this they're like oh great you're probably gonna go on vacation with yeah, my money yeah, or yeah. something you know but um it's been challenging in many ways still growing still learning um the non-profit side of things mm -hmm. but um w with all that still trying to not overwork myself or look at it like Oh, this is transactional because the kingdom of God is not transactional; right, right, right. it's relational. Yeah. Um, so yes, those things are essential and they're needed, but the focus is love. The focus is people. That's why we're here. Mm. We we literally came here because the Lord said go. No one paid us to come here. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're not on vacation of any sort. We're here because we believe the Lord said go, and we're on a treasure hunt. Like every person we meet is intentional. Every person we just spend time with is intentional. We're not throwing throwing the, the word of God in their faces. We're just being with people mm -hmm. and we're just letting the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. Yeah, that's so good, man. And and I've always liked what you were doing anyway, because I inside of me is always an evangelist also, you know, just speaking with people, working with people. I work yeah. with people all the time. Um, but it's, um, it's a good thing when you start working with people and you start just like, or you start seeing how God opens up these doors, right? for you to impart a word right and usually um um you know people say you know don't force the gospel on me or you know what i mean i don't want to hear about you know about god or whatever but once that door is open yeah that's like that's the opportunity right there to to impart and that's what you always did and that's what i saw when when i met you and we were doing you know we went to do some videos on on an unboxing your truck but we had really cool experiences with the lord not only through prayer, but with people as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I see what you're doing and what you're doing is amazing. I've seen what God has, has taken you through social media, whatever you put on social media, I've seen it and it's been really cool. Um, and that goes to these two guests that you have with you here that it shows like not even knowing them, but it also shows like what you're imparting yeah. in people's lives. You know what I mean? Well, because, you guys should, you should really hear how I met Kenzer. Yeah. Because that's a direct reflection of how I live my life. Okay. And so you should Kenzer. Kind of share that. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you, by the way. You know, <laughs> welcome to my home. Um, there's my studio here. There's our coffee break stuff. Yeah. But um, how's, how's, it, how's been your experience, you know, with, with Shane? Yeah, I'll share from, from before we met. So I was in Oklahoma, like I told you earlier. And I've been walking with the Lord for about a year, maybe, maybe a little bit less and pray, worship, read the Bible, do all the stuff, go out, feed the homeless. And um, the Lord began to speak to me about Brazil, the country of Brazil through visions, mm. encounters and prayer. And I was new to all that stuff. So I would just write it down. And at first I was like, this is going to happen tomorrow. Right. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, this isn't happening. I didn't know anyone that had ever been to Brazil yeah. or that, that had done ministry or knew anyone that was in Brazil so I come to so my my wife is from Hawaii I went to visit her to propose and we're at reunion the church that we go to my uh, first time there 
um, yeah, I believe it was my first time there, and I see this guy in the front worshiping, and I said to my my wife, who was my fiance at the time, I said, I need to go introduce myself to that guy. Wow. Never seen him before, don't know anything about him, don't know who he is. And it was one of those things where it wasn't like God, the word of the Lord came to me. It was like, this could be God, but I'm gonna step out in yeah, faith. Yeah. And waited till after the service, I said, hey, uh, my name's Kinzer, felt like I needed to introduce myself to you. And Shane starts starts talking about uh, what he's doing and how he's going to Brazil. So I'm like, oh, this is probably why. And then he, he looks at me and in the middle of like him talking about Brazil, he looks at me for like three seconds and he's like, you want to go? That's him. <laughs> and, and I know that's him now, but at the time I was like, who the heck is this guy? Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'll pray about it. And um, and he's the kind of guy I always make fun of him because he's one of my best friends now. Mm-hmm. He's the kind of guy that's like, you don't even have to pray about it. Like, let's just go. Let's just decide. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love. I love that. Um, but myself, I'm more like, yeah, let's hear what the Lord is saying first. I'm willing. Yeah. Um, and then we went and, and he said in that that first time we met he said what he just said to you that um, we're gonna see signs and wonders and miracles but what's what's better than that is we're gonna go into people's homes and build relationships yeah. and we went to Brazil and all of that was true wow. Amazing. Um, and he's he just said a lot and he he does it he yeah. says a lot but he does a lot as well yeah. it's not, not like He's not having like come over to my house and do Bible studies, yeah. but he's saying, "Come over to my house, fellowship, eat my food, mm-hmm. and let's go. Let's go out and um, watch. Watch how I do it, and then you do it, yeah. and just yeah." No, that that's amazing because and and it's so funny that you say that about um, you don't even got to pray about it, and and uh, some people might view that as like, "Oh my God, what do you mean not to pray about it?" But it's yeah. so true, like when. When you know what God is doing something in your life, right? There's those things, yeah, you do pray about it, right? There's certain things you want to present before the Lord, but then there's other things where God is just like really telling you, bro, like yeah. you know that you know in your spirit why I'm gonna, that's almost like an excuse. Yeah, let me pray about it so we can delay a ourselves. A lot of yeah. you as an excuse, yeah. right? And I know people that have said that, they, oh yeah, just let me pray. And I'm like, bro, it's either you wanna <coughs> invest in this or not. It's like, it's not like a big thing or you wanna yeah. do this or not, like it's not, Especially so. Right yeah pray about it. <laughs> that that's a big one that's a big one and if it's in your heart you you do it you know like when i was out there with him too it's like you know we were just it was just like i, I felt like i was it was two of me that's like you know it was like two of me because we were just doing things it's like okay let's go out to eat all right yeah it's like, oh, like we just it was just so genuine it was just right like, you paying i'm paying i don't care whatever. yeah it doesn't matter it's just like okay i'll yeah. pay like i wasn't looking for oh yeah is he gonna now pay for my food and i'm the gas i'm this do i gotta pay because i'm i didn't go out there for that you know i i went out there to do a specific project but also build with the guy right because he like one thing that that i remember i was here in the studio and it was like about 10 o'clock at night and he told me dude like i just want to like even if we don't do video let's just connect and chill whatever like that and i felt that so strong in my spirit because i was like wow you know what i mean like this is this is pretty dope um because it it's just about like how how much god values like what i was telling you earlier about the community that we have you know how much more valuable it is to have relationships like this than anything else man you know what i mean that accountability and then then i'm i'm praying for him before he arrives right and the Lord says, upgrade his ticket. Oh, Put yeah. In first class. Never done that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I just, I feel the Lord because yeah. I was just like, dang. Like, I already exhausted, like, my points to yeah. get him out here. And he's like, upgrade his ticket. Spend, like, I don't even know how much it was. It was expensive. <laughs> but upgrade his ticket, put him in first class. And I got to message him and just be like, Bro, I upgraded your ticket. He had never flown first class, right? Not, not in, not, not in that, Delta. not, not in the Delta yeah. like business class. That, that was the first time flying in that Air One thing that's called, uh, Delta, Delta One. one. That, yeah, that, that was the first time. Is, that's I'm the gonna, highest, like, it's like know. these little cubicles that, that yeah. they give you, but like but that's just God. Like, yeah, just like I didn't even I have not met him yet. 
uh, for him to come out to do a video and the Lord's like, upgrade his ticket. Like, yeah. that's just God. You can't make that stuff up. Like, no, yeah, you can't. I don't want to upgrade your ticket. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord crazy. wants to upgrade your ticket. No, but yeah, and like, that's where it was. That's what we were talking. And and I even told my wife, Evelise, I was like, oh my God, dude, let's put it in. She was like, and, and I don't chase after things, right? Like, you know, I get whatever God opens up, he opens up. Like, I would have sat in the back. Oh, you would give me the toilet. I would have sat in the toilet. You know what I mean? Like, whatever seat was it. Because I was not chasing after, oh, I need to be, you know, this type of person that needs to be flying in them, whatever type of, I didn't have a criteria. I was just going to meet this guy. We're doing some work and come back home. But if God decided to do that, amen, you know, and that's what I was more like feeling blessed. Like I was telling you before too, when it came to my job, when it came to, just school and in, just seeing the hand of God open up in so many ways that when you trust and believe in God, he just does amazing things, right? And that's what he's doing through Shane and I. And like you said, you hit it on the dot, right? It's because you don't, we don't just want to be like sayers or, or just speakers of the gospel. We want to be doers, right? We want to be able to, the Bible says, you know, you show, you show me by your fruits. And that's what you're seeing, you know, and, and that's how we can, you know, mark what people are really doing genuinely for the things of the Lord. You know what I mean? And how about you, man? How, how, how's been your engagement and, and interaction with, with Shane? Like, how did you meet him? Yeah, I met him for the very first time was like, he actually just sent me another video of like, I was like, oh yeah, it was the very first day that I met you. It was like when he was being sent out to Brazil and I was happened to just sit right in front of him yeah. and like, the Lord told me that like this guy's gonna be a brother to you, and I was just like, "What? Like I don't even I'm not good at like approaching people like without knowing them or anything." And so like yeah. we're praying over him and stuff like that. And so I was one of those guys who was like, "Okay, let me pray about it. Yeah. <laughs> let me pray about it first. Like let me let me pray about it first. And like yeah. when I really went to the Lord, the Lord not only put Shane on my heart, but He also put Kinsra on my heart too. Because wow. one thing that I've always lacked. Um, like throughout the years is like a community that I could actually mm -hmm. be with more specifically men that could actually just like sharpen me and like love Amen. me because I've been hurt so many times in the past yeah. where people are just dealing with comparison and jealousy and just like talking bad about me even though like all I'm trying to do is just love and it's just like I've had so many bad broken relationships when it comes to other guys uh -huh. and so when the Lord told me that I was just like fearful yeah i was just like what if something bad happens like you know like things like that and like the lord's like no like they're my sons like you can trust them and they're gonna sharpen you and they're gonna help you take you to where you, i need you to go wow. and so yeah i'm pretty sure i even shared that with you but i was just like the lord told me that that i need you in my life mm -hmm. and so i came up to him and he's like okay come over to my house let's ride <laughs> you, ever read, you, ever, you ever ridden a dirt bike and i was like no i haven't let's do it and yes, so yes. and he just immediately like like adopted me and like took me in as like a little brother that's awesome and um yeah like ever since then it's just like i felt at home with both of them and it's just blessed me and sharpened me so much being around them yeah. absolutely that, that's so good man. and like i i i can't sometimes you can't explain certain things of why god does certain things yeah. you just walk in it and believe in it because it just feels so good when god is doing something in your life it just feels so good it's so it doesn't bring any confusion it doesn't bring any doubt it like it's so clear and um um i feel god even just like just here with you guys you know what i mean because it just shows like how many men are in need of this right how many men as a whole are in need of like relationships with other men that are not going to bring them down but lift them up and I admire, I admire you for that, bro, for, for what you're doing, the love, even the love you showed me when I, like, you picked me up from the airport out there and it's like our relationship. And I have other, thank God I have other godly men that are really close friends of mine that it's like, wow, you know, if, if we could only embrace that, then we'll truly see what love really is when it comes, you know, the love of God, man. And I, you know, I appreciate you, bro, like in what you're doing and, and what you're doing out there and what you're going to continue to do. And not everybody can, can like just get on a flight and say, you know what, I'm going out there. Just so it's like, it, it's really refreshing to see that. And anybody who's going to be watching this video also to, to just like put that pride to the side when it comes to to men, right? That we want to just Bro, always put that pride up. I gave you a lay, a real lay. I gave this guy a real lay when he arrives, right? We get home, he takes it off immediately. Oh, yes, he did. Wait, wait, wait. 
puts it, <laughs> puts it on the table and I'm like, you know, later on he's like, you know, he looks at it. I said, bro, I wasted my money on that thing. That thing was expensive, bro. Like, and he said, he looking at it. He's like, oh, like, I was like, bro, that's a real leg. He said, this is real? Is, is that, yeah. Was that what you said? He's like, yeah. this is real? He's like, oh, shoot. Like, he's like, I got I to gotta put this back on. Type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, he didn't know it was a real leg. He thought it was like Like fake. the fake the fake ones, you know, but I didn't know that was a big thing out there. You I was know like, I mean? bro, this is a real thing. The, like, you know, the real good ones cost you like 40 bucks for like a really good leg. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, oh, shoot, I got to call Ivelisse. She's like, babe, look at this thing I got. And she's like, what's that? <laughs> he's like, it's like a flower thing and like a little nut on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, bro. Yo, it's such a funny memory. I just remember. And it's those little things, man, that that, that you embrace, you enjoy them, right? And and you continue to build. That's why we still have the relationship now. You know, like we don't see each other every day, but <clears throat> when we do talk FaceTime or we do talk over the phone, it's it it always feels like fresh all the time. You yeah. know, like I'm not trying to figure out where he's at, whatever. We follow each other on social and whatever. So. Um, I'm, I'm glad, bro, to, to see what you're doing. I'm actually glad that you're able to come here now for the first time. I know you've seen it on, on yeah. the reels and all that stuff, but being here is a little bit different, you know? Um, and I just pray also that God continue to use you guys while you're here. You guys are gonna be here till, till Thursday, right? Till Thursday, speaking at uh, some, a church in uh, Yonkers, Thursday okay. and Friday. All and right. Just meeting with other leaders from other ministries here. So you're just yeah. building. You're just coming to, to, to just build just build. Network. We're just flowing with the Holy Spirit. None yeah. of this was planned. Um, it's probably you stay longer. It, was, it could probably be. You probably might stay longer. I don't know. Unless you drop time. I don't know what's. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You know, yeah. all of us purchase our own ticket to come here. They purchased their own ticket to yeah. come here. The Lord told them to come. Like yeah. I didn't like say, hey. Kinzer, hey Matt, can you come? They're like, no, the Lord said come with you. Mm. Um, there was no agenda. I booked a flight here mm -hmm. and there's no agenda. My wife's like, what are you gonna do? And uh, I said, I don't know. Yeah. The Lord said go and things doors just started opening up. Yep. And so yeah, we are building and we're just flowing with the Holy Spirit, whatever He wants to do. Um, yeah, that's cool, yeah. man. I'm I'm glad to have you here, bro. I'm glad definitely to have you. Um, Thanks, bro. I, I know that that what you're doing is amazing and I know people are being blessed and receiving, you know, amazing blessings through you and God, I God, know God is going to continue to to do that. So um, it's just good to to be able to break bread with you, see the result of it by just having, you know, these two friends that you're bringing with you, having that same desire and stuff. It's a pleasure to meet you. You definitely have a friend in me now, so yes. we'll, we'll definitely exchange um, numbers and whatnot. But dude, um, Coffee break is is in a is a it's a moment where we get to like over a cup of coffee just chat and talk right and and I say this all the time a cup of coffee has opened up so many doors and opportunities for me not only in here but just in coffee shops in general just meeting new people um, and it just shows you what fellowship like really is about. A lot of people are doing it. They just know that they don't know the importance of mm -hmm. it or like where it can take them, right? Yeah. So um, um, I thought it's it's really cool. So I'm, I'm I thank you again, bro, for for being here at this coffee break episode. Um, and I'm gonna put all your information in the description, your ministries and what you're doing. If anybody wants to connect with him, and while he's here till Thursday, make sure you DM him in all the outlets that I'm gonna you know place in the in the description. Um, and like every other coffee break, man, we're just gonna end it here. Never settle with being good when you've always been meant to be great. Later. <music>